Welcome to the Paul Has Fun podcast. I'm Paul, and on this podcast, I dig into my hobbies. I also document my life and interests. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Welcome back to the podcast, or if this is your first time listening, welcome. I'm going to steal a, a few lines from a favorite podcast of the past from the Good Brothers, uh, Luke Gallows, and Chad Allegra. <laughs> I forgot his real name. But it says, uh, crack a beer, take off your pants, and listen to the podcast. But you don't have to do that. You don't have to crack a beer or take off your pants. You can just listen to this episode where it's a collection of past biggest takeaways uh, of books that I've read. And this is volume two. I'm going to leave a link to volume one uh, that I released maybe like two years ago, I think. Almost two years ago. Uh, You can check that out as well. If you like particular little lessons or reinforcements that I've learned from reading these books. And they're more like quotes. It's good stuff. It's all like self-help type of content. I admittedly have been a little uh, lazy about putting out new episodes uh, for the last few weeks. Just life is happening right now, and that's pretty much it. And so I've learned from Robin Sharma listening to his podcast to not beat myself up about releasing episodes all the time. Uh, sometimes things, they take a few weeks to work on, and sometimes I just kind of feel lazy and just don't want to work on any content. I haven't even been making any video content in the last few weeks. Thankfully, we're here, we're back, and uh, let's go ahead and get into the episode. Stop Chasing Influencers by Jared Easley and Kamanzi Constable. These are my biggest takeaways. Admittedly, I've tried to seek out people to interview for this podcast slash blog. Selfishly thinking that if I interview these people, that will bring me more subscribers and downloads. People in my eyes who I consider influencers, role models, people who have inspired me and continue to do so. Uh, They would agree to do the podcast. I offered to work around their schedule. After that, they wouldn't either respond or have to reschedule without actually rescheduling. Listening to a recent podcast episode from Dave Jackson's School of Podcasting, where I put a link uh, to that in the show notes, and reading this book, a combination of those two, it seems like serendipity at this moment right now. In the podcast, Dave talks about how we podcasters such as myself chase that elusive interview that we hope will bring us some major attention in many cases that unicorn interview doesn't have much of an effect on downloads at all in his interview with dave hooper they discuss mr hooper's podcast style he basically talks and gives a lesson at the end Reading this book in conjunction with hearing this podcast has shown me the light. I will continue to build this thing known as PVP from NJ.com. And when you, the reader, listener, viewer, and I begin to have a conversation about what it is you like, then I'll bring you more of that. I'm here to express myself on this blog and also service you with this material in any way that I can. This book, similar to Rachel Jonat's Do Less book, where you can find my biggest takeaways for that link in that in the blog post for this, has a lot of actionable steps. How to go about getting booked for speaking, getting booked on TV, how to go about guest posting on websites with large followings, how to become a coach, book your own conference, and much more. My biggest takeaways from this book doesn't cover these areas exactly, but more of the stories and point of views from the authors, and here they are. The first point being, uh, these are quotes from the book and the page numbers. Our advice is to save your money and focus on building traffic and email subscribers. That's what builds your business to the point that it can support your family. That's on page 30. If you're going to buy a program or course, make sure that there are live office hours so you can get specific questions answered. That's on page 32. Serve your audience and deliver incredible value. Helping those you serve is what makes you successful. That's on page 72. You are your own key to success, not a shout out from someone on top. Choose yourself and believe in your success. Success starts with the right mindset. Success means living a happy life. Page 74. The next one being, there's no need to chase influencers. But if you do, just realize it takes time and work. That's on page 173. The next one. To be successful in anything, you have to pay your dues. Don't be like everyone else looking for a shortcut. 
That's on page 173. The next one. Yes, most people do give up, but you don't have to be most people. That's on page 186. The next and last one. Uh, instead of focusing on big changes you want to make, focus on waking up and doing what you have to do today. As you take it one day at a time, you'll look up after a while and realize you're there. That's on page 191. I did a search online for Tim Ferriss recommended books. I enjoy Tim Ferriss's podcast. Sometimes they're a little long for me. It's not day one listening for me because of the length of the podcast, but I still very much enjoy his material. One of his recommended books was a book called Vagabonding by Rolf Potts. The subtitle of the book is An Uncommon Guide to the Art of Long-Term World Travel. In reading the book, I interpreted that as traveling the world on the cheap. The author presents it as a, being a very doable. I find it very romantic and would love to travel a part of the world at some time in my life. Asia would be my destination of choice. These are some of my biggest takeaways from Ralph Potts' Vagabonding. Number one, settle your financial and emotional debts so that your travels are not an escape from your real life, but a discovery of your real life. That's on page 16. Number two, a vacation, after all, merely rewards work. Vagabonding justifies it. That's on page 18. Takeaway number three, the notion that riches don't necessarily make you wealthy is as old as society itself. That's on page 31. The next takeaway. Vagabonding is about setting your own pace and finding your way. And you can rest assured that everything you see in a glossy brochure in Milwaukee will be just as available and 10 times cheaper when you arrive independently at your destination. That's on page 65. The next takeaway. Thus, the biggest favor you can do for yourself when trying to decide what to bring is to buy, and this is no joke, a very small travel bag. It's on page 66. The next one. Learn to treasure your worst experiences as gripping, if traumatic, new chapters in the epic novel that is your life. That's on page 143. My final takeaway here. The thing is, few of us ever are where we are. Instead of experiencing the reality of a moment or a day, our minds and souls are elsewhere, obsessing on the past or the future, fretting and fantasizing about other situations. At home, this is one way of dealing with day-to-day -day doldrums. On the road, it's a sure way to miss out on the very experiences that stand to teach you something. That's on page 159. This book, Brendan Bouchard's Life's Golden Ticket, My Biggest Takeaways, is the third self-development book I've read, listened to, which uses the parable format to relay its messages. This method is quickly becoming my favorite. The first was The Go-Giver, the second being Who Moved My Cheese. When I first opened the book, I thought, with all this small text, this book is going to take forever. But as I started reading, I was surprised and impressed by Mr. Burchard's writing. I'm a regular listener and fan of his podcast. I kept hearing his voice as I was reading the book. This book can absolutely be translated into a movie. This is not a totally happy book. It does go into some darker territories such as abuse and violence. Nonetheless, I enjoyed it and became even more engaged as it progressed. Here are five takeaways from Brendan Burchard's Life's golden ticket. The first one. The second step is to interrupt the spell, to question or tune out society's messages, as well as those in your mind, that make you question your strength. The third step is to start living your life by conscious control. That's on page 36. The next one. Too often we forget the most important and meaningful chapters in our life story. That's on page 47. The next one, I simply took away the three reference points every person needs in order to be self-aware. First, I told them to stop paying attention to their thoughts and feelings. Second, I told them to stop paying attention from the outside world, to pretend the crowd wasn't even there. That's on page 72. The next one, don't forget the third reference point. 
To be self-aware, you also need to know who you are. You need to have an internal standard for who you are or who you want to be. That's also on page 72. And the final one, your career is making you miserable. I have no doubt that you're busy, but you are not fulfilled. Your busy work isn't your life's work. Am I right? That's on page 119. There is so much more wonderful material in this book, including an actual envelope at the end. If you purchase a new copy of the book, uh, you'll see that sealed envelope at the end. And uh, this is for the reader. Uh, in reading the story, you'll know the significance of the envelope. Kamal Ravikant's Love Yourself, Like Your Life Depends On It, has me journaling I love myself on a daily basis, except I swap out the myself with Paul. I've found this practice to be empowering. A quick short read, which one can get through in an afternoon, if that. I will link to interviews done with the author, his Wikipedia page and website for more of his backstory and why he wrote this book. Here are some of my biggest takeaways. The first one, if you've ever been a baby, you've experienced love. The mind knows it on a fundamental, even primal level. So unlike most words, love has the ability to slip past the conscious and the subconscious where magic happens. That's on page 11. The next one, what if you don't believe that you love yourself? Doesn't matter. Your role is to lay down the pathways, brick upon brick, reinforce the connections between the neurons. The mind already has a strong wiring for love. The body knows it as well. It knows that love nurtures, that love is gentle, and that love is accepting. It knows that love heals. That's on page 11 as well. The next one. And that is why a focused mental loop is a solution. Take this one thought. I love myself. Add emotional intensity if you can. It deepens the groove faster than anything. Feel the thought, run it again and again. Feel it, run it, whether you believe it or not, doesn't matter. Just focus on this one thought. Make it your truth. That's on page 18. The next one. That is where the questions came from. In dealing with others and reacting to their negative emotions with my own. I find myself asking this question. If I love myself truly and deeply, would I let myself experience this? The answer always was a no. That's on page 25. Uh, the next one. And here's the interesting part. When we love ourselves, we naturally shine. We are naturally beautiful. And that draws others to us. Before we know it, they're loving us, and it's up to us to choose who to share our love with. Beautiful irony. Fall in love with yourself. Let your love express itself, and the one world will be the path to your door to fall in love with you. That's on page 28. The next one. If a painful memory arises, don't fight it or try to push it away. You're in quicksand. Struggle reinforces the pain. Instead, go to love. Love for yourself. Feel it. If you have to fake it, fine. It'll become real eventually. Feel the love for yourself as the memory ebbs and flows. That will take the power away. And even more importantly, it will shift the wiring of the memory. Do it again and again. Love. Rewire. Love. Rewire. It's your mind. You can do whatever you want. That quote is on page 32. And finally, as I started to love myself, things inside me shifted. Fear strengthens the ego. Love softens it. I became more open, vulnerable. It was natural to be gentle with others, even when they weren't loving towards me. And the times it wasn't easy, I had the resources, the loop, the meditation, the question to return to self-love. That's on page 51. By purchasing this book, through the links I've provided in the show notes or on the YouTube video description, it will support the author and myself. I'm beginning to reread books I've included in this takeaway series, and this book I can already see myself quoting to friends. Referring back to it, when I'm having a down period and just pulling it out and skimming through it again. Thank you, Mr. Ravikant. Be 
2016 comes to a close, I've read the most books I've read since high school. There have been several times in history where book burnings have taken place, and this makes me grateful that we have books to read, as I've mentioned in a couple episodes ago regarding book burning. Uh, My three favorite books that I've read this year, the ones that have had the most impact on me, the ones that when I read them, I had to like kind of sit back many times in reading each of these books and really just kind of reflect and think about what uh, these books were talking about. I had to write down or start journaling like how is it that this like affects me how is this, how is this impacting me and these three books were as i mentioned before James and claudia altitier's power of no uh jack canfield's chicken soup for the soul and gary keller and jay papasan's the one thing and this is the biggest takeaways for the one thing book an abundance of life-changing material in any of these books i feel Here are five of my biggest takeaways slash quotes from The One Thing. First one, going small is a simple approach to extraordinary results, and it works. It works all the time, anywhere, and on anything. Why? Because it only has one purpose, to ultimately get you to the point. When you go as small as possible, you'll be staring at The One Thing, and that's the point. That's on page 11. The next one. Extraordinary results come from asking the focusing question. It's how you'll plot your course through life and business and how you'll make the best progress on your most important work. Whether you seek answers, big or small, asking the focusing question is the ultimate success habit for your life. That's on page 111. The next one. The most successful people are the most productive people. Productive people get more done, achieve better results, and earn far more in their hours than the rest. They do so because they devote maximum time to being productive on their top priority, their one thing. That's on page 158. The next one. To experience extraordinary results, be a maker in the morning and a manager in the afternoon. That's on page 168. Finally, now open your eyes and listen to me. Whatever you see, you have the capacity to move toward. And when what you go for is as vast as you can possibly envision, you'll be living the biggest life you can possibly live. That's on page 209. It's very powerful stuff. The one that I wanted just to go back on was the one where he says, to experience extraordinary results, be a maker in the morning and a manager in the afternoon. The book goes into a particular section where it's talking about willpower and it's talking about when you're at your peak, when you're at your best performance or your best self. It's when you wake up in the morning, when you're fully recharged, you have a full tank of willpower at that point as well. And as the day continues, your willpower becomes weaker and weaker and your energy uh, naturally becomes less and less. So it's one of the reasons why he talks about that, about being a maker in the morning, putting your most creative juices, putting uh, your most focus on your one thing, and then in the afternoon be a manager, meaning manage your life or what you need to take care of or your employees or manage things you have to do as opposed to putting all the focusing power at that time. It's one of the points I just wanted to delve a little deeper into. As always, any thoughts, comments, feedback, you can leave it on the blog at paulhasfun.com or on the YouTube video uh, for this particular episode. I'm going to leave affiliate links to all these books where if you heard something that really interests you, uh, please check out the book through my affiliate link. It'll help me out. It'll help the podcast out and you'll be able to get a great read for sure. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Paul. Thank you for spending your time with me and I'll catch you on the next one.